Hi there, my name is Daniela and I am a licensed therapist. I have been practicing in the mental health field for the last six years. I am here to give you tips about mental health, help you improve your personal development and have real talks. Today we're going to have a real talk about better health. The reason why I'm choosing this topic is because I actually worked for BetterHelp for over a year. So I believe I am capable of giving the right information out there so you can clarify any doubts you have about BetterHelp. I decided to start working for BetterHelp actually last month. I have transitioned to my private practice for many, many reasons. I did learn a lot from BetterHelp, which I'm thankful for. So if you are actually a therapist and you are wanting to have the nomad life like I had a few months ago where I was able to travel the world while working for BetterHelp and seeing clients regularly, then maybe BetterHelp could be something good for you. I have a referral link that you can look for in the description down below and that will lead you to the application process to see if you can be a good fit for BetterHelp and if you can you know, take advantage of working from home or from wherever you want. I plan to make a video for the therapists, but this video is dedicated to the consumers or the clients. Let me start by explaining what BetterHelp is. BetterHelp is a virtual platform that connects potential clients with potential therapists. So it's really a middleman that works as a great communicator between these two people. They take care of all the finances, all the regulations, policies, and they offer a platform where two people can meet and collaborate in a therapeutic relationship. The type of professionals that you will find in BetterHelp is limited to therapists or I should say licensed therapists. So you won't find psychiatrists or any other types of providers. I want to make that clear. A licensed therapist, just so you know, is a professional that had education in mental health and is now licensed by a specific state. If we're talking about the US, of course. So for example, I am licensed in the state of Florida and Utah, so I can see clients from these two states. And yeah, that means that the board from these two states recognize me as a capable and legal provider to provide these services of mental health. There are different types of therapists that you can find in BetterHelp, like licensed marriage and family therapists who can do couples therapy. There are LMHCs or LPCs, which are licensed professional counselor or licensed mental health counselor. These providers can treat individuals, so only you know one person at a time. There are also social workers and even people with PhDs that you can find in BetterHelp. All right, so let's just go ahead and start with the positives about BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the world's largest virtual platform that offers mental health services. So that's a big deal. It's already in 168 countries. I know for a fact that in some countries it's super difficult or super expensive to see a therapist. So if you are somewhere in the Middle East or Africa or even Asia, you can see a therapist just on your phone with a very affordable price. This means that BetterHelp is interested in getting therapists that speak multiple languages. So for example, with me, I speak English and Spanish, which was great because then I could see people from you know two different languages and offer that service as a provider in the platform. But just so you know, most therapists are from the US and then I think we have some therapists from the UK and from Australia, but those are, if I'm not mistaken, the three countries that BetterHelp hires people from. From. Everyone's favorite perk is that you get to see your therapist from pretty much anywhere, from your couch, from your car, in the middle of work if you have a break, hopefully it's not too loud. And yeah, it's really amazing to not have to drive anywhere and not have to you know, organize your day around this session. I am a client of BetterHelp too, and I have had sessions in the middle of the woods in Spain, which was so amazing. Important note, hopefully you never have to see your therapist in inappropriate attires or places. So keep that in mind. Number four, if you don't wanna be seen in video, BetterHelp does allow you to do phone calls or even a live chat. So that's pretty cool too. Number five, you can use your platform from your phone, your computer, your tablet, and I think that's about it. Yeah, that should be all the devices that we have these days. But yeah, you just need to download the app and then accept the call from your therapist and that's it. Number six, BetterHelp offers special services. So not only they have individual services, but they also offer couples therapy, teen therapy, LGBT, and faith-based type of therapy. So there's room for all. 
Number seven, BetterHelp offers group webinars, which you can sign up to and show up so you can also have group therapy online. Really cool. Eight, you can stay anonymous in BetterHelp. BetterHelp allows you to pick your own name and as a therapist, all we see is your chosen name, no last name, and we do see your age. So we would see something like John at 35. That's it, that's how we identify the client. There's a limitation to this though. If the therapist considers your life is at risk or someone else is at risk, your therapist can request your personal information, BetterHelp will give it to them and then your therapist can contact you or your emergency contacts. That's the only limitation there is to the confidentiality of your personal information. Number nine, you can stay in touch with your therapist throughout the week. So you don't only see your therapist or talk to your therapist during that live session, but you can also send messages to your therapist throughout the week. There are unlimited messages that you can share and that includes text, voice notes, videos, and attachments, which I think it was a really cool feature. So my clients could maybe sometimes give me extra information about them that we couldn't catch up with during the call. So now I am well informed about my client. I would say though to have normal expectations with the time that your therapist takes to answer you. Remember that we probably have a lot of clients. When I was working for BetterHelp, I had 50 clients in my caseload. So uh, answering every message every day was a little bit too much. So give your therapist a day or two days to answer at least. Number 10, BetterHelp offers worksheets and journal prompts that they send you. Actually, your therapist will be sending you the worksheets as needed, but the journal prompts are sent to your email so you can answer and you know keep up with your therapeutic work so you not only work during that live session but also independently which is really the key to success number 11 you can change your therapist by just clicking a button which is really great if you have been in therapy before and you have had to change therapists you know how much of a hassle it is so being able to just change your therapist by clicking something is really relieving number 12 when it comes to pricing I believe the average client pays around $300 to $360 per month and that includes one live session per week and then the unlimited messages as I mentioned earlier but BetterHelp does offer a sliding scale so I'm not sure where you have to go to but there's a questionnaire that you can fill out and then they can give you a specific price I don't know if it's a fixed price that you can pay for your whole time or if it starts like that and then they change to you but I am 100% sure that there's a sliding scale system that can facilitate a better pay. Oh, and they also take EAP. So ask your employer if they offer that to you so you can take advantage and get a few sessions with BetterHelp. Number 13, you don't need to worry about paperwork. So this is not such an important one, but as I said, I have seen therapists throughout my life and sometimes all this paperwork and payment and scheduling and all of those nuances about seeing your therapist in person can be a bit like uncomfortable or annoying to go through after every session. So the beauty of BetterHelp is that you just need to put your card on file and of course complete the initial paperwork, but then you don't have to worry about it anymore. You see your therapist, your card is charged monthly and there's nothing you need to worry about. So I think that's a, I don't know, a cool perk. Number 14, the platform is very user-friendly. I have had clients of all ages, like all the way from 12 to 60, and no one has ever had a problem using it. It's really intuitive and easy to use. Now let's talk about the drawbacks about BetterHelp. Number one, and something that my clients used to complain about, sessions are limited to 30 or 45 minutes. So your therapist usually offers 30 minute sessions or 45 minute sessions. You have to talk to them because I don't think that BetterHelp really specifies the time that you have for your session. They don't tell you you will have a session from 3 p.m. to 3.30. They just tell you you have a session at 3 p.m. So you really don't know what you're getting. You, I would recommend that you ask your therapist, is this a 45 minute session or a 30 minute session? Just to be clear, can you go over 45 minutes? Like, is a call gonna drop? No. Is your therapist gonna hang up on you? 
I mean, not in a rude way, but yeah, technically you can run over the 45 minutes, but the thing is that your therapist doesn't really get compensated for any minute after the 45 minute mark. So we do try to hold that boundary because we have to see so many people as well that it's just not feasible to do long sessions. We do take 15 minutes to write down notes and to keep up with other type of admin work. Your live session is 45 minutes, but then you have to assume that those other 15 minutes we're using to work on you behind the scene. So yeah, that happens in the real world, usually in in-person therapy therapists still see their clients for 45 minutes and they take 15 minutes for admin work and it's the same deal in better help so just keep in mind sessions are limited and then number two which is related to number one i said earlier that you have one session a week you can do two sessions a week if your therapist allows but you do have to pay extra for it number three you can't schedule more than one session at a time so you can only schedule one session and then wait until your session's over to regain access to your therapist's calendar and then pick the session for the next week so if you really want to have a set session like mondays at 12 p.m you have to talk to your therapist to see if they will allow that and if they will make that accommodation to save you every Monday at 12 p.m. But it can be a little bit tricky, so really you have to be very flexible with the day and time that you can see your therapist. BetterHelp doesn't take insurance, and not even if you have out-of-network benefits, you will be able to run this by your insurance. I would still say call your insurance and ask them, but let me explain why you can't bill your insurance with BetterHelp. The reason why the services from BetterHelp are not billable through insurance, it's due to two things. First is that really BetterHelp doesn't recognize your therapist as a therapist. They recognize them as an independent contractor that they call service provider. So they don't call therapists therapists or licensed therapists. They call them service providers. Who's a service provider? You tell me. It could be anyone, really. If you open the door for me, you give me a service, then you're providing a service for me. Like, it's really an ambiguous term, and I'm sure that for a reason, but when you bill your insurance, you have to really explain who's giving you this service and why, which is the other problem we can't justify why in better help because service providers in better help can't provide a diagnosis so if you don't have a reason why you are needing this medical service and if you don't have a lawful like legit provider that's providing this service then you can't bill your insurance with it. You need an ICD-10 code to be able to tell your insurance, hey, I have depression, hey, I have anxiety, or I have this issue, so that's why I'm seeing this person, please cover me. In this case, therapy through BetterHelp is like, it's just simply not recognized by insurance. Circling back to the topic of diagnoses, so, you really can't come to BetterHelp if you need a diagnosis for any type of formal reason. So if you're a court order, you can't come because no one's going to be treating you for that problem. If you need a letter for your dog for it to make it be an emotional service dog or whatever it may be, we can't because we can't really acknowledge that you have a diagnosis or if you are curious about a personality disorder or a mental health disorder and you want to come to better help to you know talk about it and clarify that diagnosis we can't help you either we talked about being able to change therapists and that being a very cool feature in better help which it is okay so based on my experience as a client in better help it took me like uh, a long time to find a good therapist. I had to go through four different therapists. I'm going to say why. So BetterHelp doesn't have a strict interviewing process or any type of structured interviewing process. 
as long as you meet the criteria so as long as you're licensed and I think that they require three years of experience or something like that which I'm not sure how much they really care for but really if you have a license you can be in better help no one's going to be supervising you no one's going to be making sure you're providing the right services so as far as I know anyone in better help could be doing unethical things and no one would ever know as I said earlier therapists in better help are independent contractors BetterHelp is just providing a platform that's connecting them with clients. So it's like a network platform, really. I don't think they care that much about the quality of the mental health services that are being provided. They care about, you know, user experience and making everything easy for these two people to connect, but really good therapy, mm, I don't know. But anyways, I don't want to scare you off. I just want to say be patient and be resourceful. Keep looking for therapists. If you don't feel that connection, if you don't feel like it's a good match, change therapists until you find the right person for you. And this happens really everywhere, not only in BetterHelp, it happens with in-person therapy. So we just gotta try our best to find that good match. Technical glitches or problems do happen. They are very rare though, but remember technology is not perfect. I would say that compared with other platforms that I've used, BetterHelp has been the best when it comes to you know, solving issues quickly and having little to no glitches. Something I think I already mentioned, there are no psychiatrists in BetterHelp, so if you need medication management or you need a prescription, you have to go to another provider. BetterHelp does not attend crises or emergencies or severe chronic mental illnesses. If you are suicidal, if you're self-harming, if you have an emergency, you can't count on better help. If that's the case, please contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline and the phone number is 800-273-8255. If you don't want to jump on a phone call, just text HOME to the crisis text line, which is 741-741. Although you can get to pay an affordable subscription, if you don't attend to your session for whatever reason, or if you can't attend to your sessions because you're going on vacation or you're sick or whatever, life happens, you won't get reimbursed. So the membership is the membership. It's like the deal you have with Netflix, right? Like you pay every month, regardless of how many movies you watch. So same deal with BetterHelp. In conclusion, BetterHelp could be the platform for you if you don't need to rely on insurance, you don't have a crisis or any type of severe mental health illness, you want to have a professional guide you and support you and listen to you, you want to improve your personal development, you want to do therapy from the comfort of your couch, you do well working and making progress independently. BetterHelp may not be the place for you if you have great medical insurance benefits that you want to take advantage of. If you have a severe mental illness such as schizophrenia, schizophrenia, bipolar 1, substance abuse disorder, hallucinations, delusions, paranoia, or even a severe personality disorder. And I would add to that list severe eating disorders. I think that people need a higher level of care on this case. If you are in crisis or you know that you may need emergency services at one point or another, if you need a diagnosis or any type of formal mental health services, if you need medication or medication management, and of course if you don't have reliable technology. I hope this video was helpful in clarifying your doubts about BetterHelp. Let me know if you have any other questions and I hope to see you soon in another video.